Okay, this is another video just to show some more work that I've been doing on the Dreamcast 3D Engine. And one thing you'll be able to see straight away is that it can now load in 3D models. So I've put some, oh, cows, why not? And you probably see it's not quite loading the textures in perfectly, but, you know, you can tell it's a cow. So the other thing I've been working on, if I bring this up, is a 3D, well, semi-3D lighting engine. So if I load a different map, which is this one that's got these canyons and these raised objects, you'll see at the moment this, this there's a, if I put that into dark, there's a, a little light that's travelling around. So this is casting light in 360 degrees, so it's not like a, a like a spotlight, although it could be. Uh, if you just reduce the angle. And what this will do is whenever the light hits a solid object or anything higher than it, it'll start to cast a shadow. So you'll see as this light's moving around, if I bring this forward a little bit, you'll see down here that the back of this on the left will start to go dark as the light's getting closer to it. See, it starts to go dark, but because the light at the moment is travelling over the top of everything, then uh, it'll. There we go. So this is now in shadow. So if I move this forward and try and find the light, again, that's that's going to go over the top of that because it just sticks to the geometry. But once it drops back down, the back should be in shadow. So this is pretty much a working um, 3D uh, lighting engine, like completely dynamic lighting. So it's not quite the level of you know Doom 3 or anything like that. But the idea is that if you had multiple lights like this, you could use it to you know do all sorts of effects. Like you could have some. I don't know, like a car headlights travelling around or something with a lantern and it casts dynamic shadows. So this this is more or less a, an idea that I had about 10 years ago and it worked on a 700 megahertz PC and you know there were no shaders or anything. I think they'd just come out but the Dreamcast doesn't have shaders. And I've seen this done a few times on the internet but they mainly use shader languages so I thought, well, can you do it using slightly more traditional techniques? And it seems, yeah, you can. So you'll see on the right of the image, the back of that little hill will start to go dark as the light's moving around. It's a little bit glitchy at the moment. And I've lost the light. There we go. So as this is moving around, you, you should be able to see... Oops, if I back up a bit. As it's moving around the back of this hill, the bit just in front of us will start to go dark. Yeah, it's starting to go dark now. And as it moves further to the right, then the shadow should start going to the left a bit more which it is doing. The problem is with the terrain it's not the best thing to show lighting and shadow but you kind of imagine having the sun move around the screen and light the terrain dynamically. Computationally that's quite expensive because you're lighting the entire map but it seems to be running quite well. I've used this on a, a more modern PC just on a laptop and it's not that quick but I found on the Dreamcast using the fast maths at libraries uh, using the, this vector processor, this 3D unit, it's not too bad. So I think I'll leave it there. I'll just put on the... Yeah, <laughs> makes it a bit more apparent. I'll put on the light bloom just so you can see how it's lighting. But you could probably see how these could be used in combination really to accentuate the um, the lighting effect. Right, so I think... Uh, on that note, I'll leave it there. So thanks very much for watching.